Unit 8, Lesson 5 are independent and dependent events. We want to understand independent events and show that events are either independent or dependent and then find the probability of such events. First of all, these are different from the things that we have looked at before. We are, still, we are going to use the word and to describe it as well. But this is one thing that follows another one. Previous to this, we were only selecting one, selecting one item out of all the items that could be selected. And we might want to know if it had two different characteristics. In this case, we're going to do one thing after the other one. And we want to know whether the first one has any effect on the second one. Two events are independent if the occurrence of one event has no effect on the probability of the occurrence of another event. For example, if we toss coins, the probability that we get ahead the first time and the probability that we get ahead the second time are independent. They don't have any effect on each other. Dependent events are when the first one has an effect on the occurrence of the second one when we do things in order. So if we toss two coins again, the outcome of one toss is independent of the outcome of another. If we have four pennies and one dime in a jar and randomly pick two of them, one after the other, the outcome is, the outcome is not independent of the second. And that's assuming, of course, that we take one out and put it to the side instead of putting it back in. If we were to put it back in the jar, then it would be independent. But if we take it and put it out of the jar, then this would be dependent. The multiplication rule for events. For any two events A and B, the probability of A and B is the probability of A, given that B has happened, times the probability of B. This can be used for either independent or dependent events. When things are independent, though, independent means if I tell you B, it doesn't tell you anything about A, so we have to have the probability of A given B equals to A, and we have to have the probability of b given a equals b. So up here in this definition, that would simply become the probability of a times b. So if they're independent, we need the probability of a and b equal to the probability of a times the probability of b. So again, there are sort of two ways to tell if things are independent. We can either show that the conditional and unconditional probabilities are the same, meaning b had no effect on a, or we can find the probability of A, the probability of B, and the probability of the intersection, and then show that the probability of A times B gives us the same thing as the probability of A and B. This comes from the definition of this. If we have the probability of A and B, we can simply multiply both sides by the probability of B to get this main definition. And then because they're independent, these would have to be true. So if we look at the two-way frequency table that gives data about 180 randomly chosen flights at the airport, use the table to decide if the event that a flight is on time is independent of the event that a flight is domestic. In this case, we're going to look at the definition whether something changes or not when I tell you the one thing. So I want to look at, say, the probability that it's on time, which is O, and the, the probability of having a domestic flight, which is D, and see if those two things are independent. So first we're going to find the probability of being on time, which is 162 out of 180, which reduces to 9 out of 10. Then I'm going to look at the probability that they were on time given that they were domestic, meaning I'm restricting myself to the row of domestic flights and looking at the probability that those were on time. Those are now 108 out of 120, which is also 9 out of 10. Since those two probabilities are the same, the unconditional and the conditional probability, that means that those are independent events, or O is independent of D, being on time is independent of the flights being domestic. Another example, we have a two-way frequency table that shows the survey results for 100 people who regularly walk for exercise. We're going to use the table to decide if the event the person prefers walking outdoors is independent of the event that the person is male. In this case, we're going to try to show the probability rule that says the probability of the intersection has to be the product of the two individual probabilities. So first, we're going to find the probability that they prefer walking outdoors, which is now 60 out of 100. Then we're going to find the probability that they're male, the males being 50 out of 100 or 0.5.
Then we're going to find the probability of O and M, which means these are the ones in the intersection divided by the total 100, 0 0.4. If we multiply these together, we get 0.3. That's different from the probability of the intersection, so walking outdoors preference is not independent of being male. Drawing with replacement gives independent events, while drawing without replacement gives dependent events. In both cases, we can multiply the probabilities to get the probability that two events occur with B after A. So if they're independent, again, that comes when we replace objects. If we're like uh, the very first example when we said that we might put the uh, pennies or dimes back in the jar, if we replace them, they would be independent, and we would simply multiply the two individual probabilities. If we don't replace them, they're dependent, and we have to look at how the first one affects the second one. So once we find the probability of A, the second probability has to be adjusted knowing that A has occurred. So suppose we randomly draw marbles from a jar with 15 red marbles and 17 yellow marbles. If we draw with replacement, find the probability that the that we draw a yellow marble first and a red marble second. Well, we started off with 15 red and 17 yellow. So the probability, so there were 32 marbles. So the probability that the first one is yellow is 17 out of 32. Then I put that back. There are still 32 marbles in the jar. When I want the probability of red, it's now 15 out of 32, which will be about 24.9%. If we draw without replacement, these are dependent, and I'm going to have to adjust my probabilities. Find the probability again that you get a yellow and then a red. Well, when you draw the first one, you have like there at the start, you have 15 red and 17 yellow out of 32. The probability of yellow is 17 out of 32. But now if I know that I got a yellow the first time, the next time there are 15 red, but there are only 16 yellow because I got one of those the first time, and there are only 31 marbles left in the jar, so the probability of red given yellow is now 15 out of 31. When I multiply those, that's about 25.7%. We can extend this rule to having more events. If I do one thing after another, <clears throat> the probability of A and B and C I do first A, and then B if I know A has happened, and then C if I know A and B have happened. So if I have a key ring with seven different keys, and we're attempting to unlock a door in the dark, if we randomly try keys at one time, what will be the probability that the third key tried is the right one? Well, that means I had to get the wrong one on the first one, and I had to get a wrong one on the second one, and I got a right one on the third one, because otherwise I would have stopped right away. So I need the probability that I got a wrong one first, and then I got a wrong one on the second, knowing that I got a wrong one on the first, and then I got a right one on the third time, knowing that the first and the second were wrong. So the first time to get a wrong one, there are six out of seven that are wrong. Then I set that one to the side, there are only six keys left. There are five right and six wrong. So the probability to get a wrong on the second one is five out of six. Now I have two keys sitting outside, the two wrong keys. So what's left? is one right and four wrong. So what's the probability that the third one is right is one out of five. When I multiply all those probabilities, by the way, the six and the six canceling and the five and the five canceling, I end up with one out of seven. Find the probability that one of the first three key tried is the right one. Well, one of the first three keys is right is the complement of all three of them being wrong. So 1 minus the probability of that, again, we would get a wrong on the first one, and a wrong on the second one, and a wrong on the third one. 1 minus that will be 3 sevenths.